Kendra Longevity Lifestyle Designers is Govin here with Secrets of Longevity.com. I'm going to share my warm up routine that I do pretty much every day. Even if I don't exercise that day, I try and fit this in because it's just so invigorating uh, for uh, making the day just that more uh, friendly to my body. If I'm sitting, for example, for the whole day working, if I do this at the start of the day, I feel much better, or I might do it in the middle of the day to break up my day and uh, loosen up before continuing on. And it is so good because it's not focused on stretching out muscles as a warm-up, which there's a lot of divided research on whether that's actually beneficial or not. Uh, so what this focuses on is bringing blood flow to the joints, and just by doing that you actually get some more blood flow to the muscles. You get a little bit of muscle stretching, but the intent behind it isn't to actually stretch the muscles to the point of gaining flexibility. If you want to train flexibility, do that as its own practice, not just a warm-up. It's bloody early October and uh, we still have mosquitoes out here. It's kind of ridiculous. But yeah, the focus is on uh, warming up the joints, which, in my opinion, are much more likely to get injured in just everyday exercises, whether you're doing some sort of sport, cardio, strength training, what have you. Most people find that as they age, or even in their younger years, that's what gets injured. That's what uh, soft tissue injuries uh, can become chronic problems because they take so long to heal and often they're related to the lack of uh, form in a given exercise or workout routine. Uh, so by warming up the joints you ensure they're better protected. Uh, so if you do have a slight instability you're going to have less likelihood of completely wrecking the joint. Um, so it goes for the spine, the shoulders, the elbows, the wrists, the hips, the knees, the ankles. So that's the main thing we're going to be focused on. And there's multiple schools of thought that go into this. I'm not copying any specific one, but the one I'm borrowing from most heavily, I'll put a link down below if you want to check out the book called Super Joints by Pavel Tatsulin from Russian uh, training. And he's taken that from ballet, Olympic training, military training. So it's very well-rounded and uh, applicable to a wide range of activities. And before I get into it, and by the way, you can also follow along with this, so I encourage you to do that um, when I begin. Uh, this, the intent behind this isn't to go to the point where you actually feel a stretch. You might feel it, and that's okay, but the intent isn't to like get to a point and then you go and you feel that stretch along whatever is being twisted or pulled. Uh, so for example, if we're doing wrist rolls, the point is to go through the range of motion, not to you know, get a stretch that stretches that part, and then as you come around to stretch that part of the arm, then stretch this part of the arm. It's just about bringing blood flow to the wrist. Uh, so you have that intent in mind. Uh, you can always take any one of these exercises and turn it into a stretch for that part. For example, we'll do the popular cat pose or cat stretch that is very common in yoga. And in yoga you do it so that you feel the stretch along the front of the body as you arch that way and then you round your back and you feel it the stretch along the back. But we're doing it where we go to either extreme without necessarily pushing through to that deep stretch. And we're also not going to hold it. So that's the key here is that uh, it saves time so you're not like spending, if you're trying to do nine stretches each way, that's going to take you a good five plus minutes if you're holding each side. But you're also not rushing through it, that's the other thing to keep in mind. So you can vary the uh, speed at which you do these things, but you want to be able to do it smoothly through the range of motion. And of course, of course, of course, if you have any kind of injury on any part of your body, consult a physician or uh, a health professional that deals with that issue that you have and just avoid doing that. If you have confidence that you can do it, take it easy. Definitely don't go to your maximum uh, movement in case you have you know, ligament problem or tendon problem. Um, but this can be preventative to those things um, and can be a way of rehabilitating it. But again, you'd want to consult with someone that's really well versed in whatever injury or problem you have uh, to see if that's something you should be doing. And I'll be giving some instruction, but I'm going to try and keep it fluid as we go through all the exercises. I generally do reps of 18 for each one, but we're going to stick to 9. Um, ju but just keep in mind that you can do this longer. Uh, I, the ideal is to do 18 for each uh, motion. And if you don't want to be stuck in that 9-18 routine, that's just my preference. You can do 10 sets or 20 sets. But you can also do those longer routines that have those 18 plus reps in each set for the exercises. And I'll often just do the 9 if I'm in a rush and I know I need to fit it within like 10-15 uh, minutes but if I'm okay going 20 plus minutes and sometimes I do add other exercises in this is just the bare bones one that I do um, then I do it longer so if I'm doing a two hour workout I do this at the start and it might take me half an hour of my time just to warm up but I'm also putting in some flexibility training there which I'll show one exercise at the end which I'd recommend doing if you don't have shoulder mobility or you want to increase your shoulder mobility 
Um, so I'm not going to include that in the bare bones sort of joint warm up, but it does help with the shoulders, and we'll get to that at the end. We're going to begin just warming up the neck. One, one, two, two, three, three, and as we get closer to nine, we're going to start adding in full sideways bend. Mario losing track. Five, five, we might get four, but we'll go to five, six, six. So if you can imagine going to 18, you would go to nine with just doing the neck, and then you'd add in the sideways bend with the whole spine uh, from 10 to 18. And then as we get close to the end, eight, we're almost doing the full range of motion that we can do bending sideways. Not we're focusing on the stretch on the opposite side from where you're bending. Just going to that place where you actually feel uh, almost like relaxation happens, if that makes sense. And you also want to consciously relax as you're doing this continuous breathing and things like that. So you're just focused on the whole spine twisting. You want to start with just your head and neck, then add in the whole full twist as you get closer to the end. And what you might notice if you drive a car frequently, whatever side you look up over your shoulder when you're backing up, you might find that that side is, you can go further than this side. So this is about bringing in balance mobility to each side of the body as well. I believe I'm at eight. Maybe not. <laughs> and then last one we go to the full range that we can without it being a strong stretch. Next we're going to work on some shoulder and arm mobility. And at the same time that you do this, you also want to feel like you're lengthening in your spine so that you're keeping it straight, but you're kind of leaning forward on a bit of an angle, and you're imagining that someone's twisting your wrist this way and this wrist this way. And this is a martial arts warm-up from Sistema, from Russian Special Forces training. You can do it with the fist closed if you want. It doesn't really matter too much. is just shoulders and elbows. Actually, this one's really good for the elbows. Two. And the wrists. And fingers. This is actually the only one that really you go to your full mobility for fingers uh, extending and contracting. I'm losing track of my count as because I'm talking at the same time, but we're doing roughly nine. You would ideally, in a full warm-up, want to do 18 of each uh, set, or 18 reps in each uh, exercise. Next, we're going to do the calf stretch. about lengthening the spine so you're not getting caught in you know kind of like a half-hearted stretch or extension. So as you curve your back, you're at the same time imagining your 
spine stretching out. And also with your breath, breathe in whatever way feels natural with the movement. So you're not going to be breathing in when you go like this because this movement, your lungs naturally want to exhale the air in them. And if you want to do it extra slow, you can breathe in and then also breathe out this movement. This is uh, another shoulder exercise. So that, so far we've done basically three mobility exercises for the core and um, uh, neck, the spine and neck. We did the twisting, sideways bending, and then next was forward bending. You can think of each way the spine generally moves, that's going to be addressing each plane of movement. Uh, and then we've done two for the arms and we're going to do the third one. This one's a little more complicated, it takes a bit of uh, working with it at first, uh, just playing around to see how you get it. But it's basically like a weaving in through your armpits and around. Six, seven, eight, Nine. and then back the other way, one, and you're also doing this whole twist with the wrists and forearms, three, four, try and remain relaxed, you're not trying to be tense and doing a really hard stretch as you're doing this, you're going through the full range of movement, and if you're limber enough, your full range of movement won't feel like much, but it does bring blood flow to the joints. Whereas if you have a limited frame, uh, uh, what do you call it, plane of movement, uh, when you get to that edge of it, it will feel like a bit more of a, a bit more work to do this exercise. For example, say a really tight chest muscles. When you're doing this one, if you can't come all the way back, when you get to the edge of that full range of movement, you're going to get a bit more fatigue because you are doing a bit of stretching. So yeah, two more there. Next, um, we're going to do some leg work. Actually, we'll start with the wrists and ankles. Put on an ankle for this so you see it. And I do all four at once just to save time. You can do just the wrists, then the ankles. If you prefer it that way. So one, two, three, So this really works for the knees, hips, and a little bit on the ankles. Uh, you can do it from a leaning back on your elbows. If you want a bit more engagement of the core, you go flat just with your neck off. As you do it, you're going to have uh, a bit of warm-up on the abdominal muscles because uh, you're keeping your legs elevated. So this is kind of like the shoulder exercise where you're weaving in under the shoulder, but it's for your legs. Six, seven, eight, nine, and the other way. One, two, three, four, five, six. Changing position here so you see. Seven, eight, nine. Do it with the other leg on top. One, two, way with the final set of reps. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So depending on your abdominal strength you might have a bit of a good feeling after that and that is part of a warm-up as well. It's, uh, doing a really low level strength routine can be a great warm-up. So just holding a plank pose, for instance, is a good way to uh, warm up the shoulders and arms and a bit of the chest and abdominals as well. Uh, but leg lifts, uh, squats, as long as it's not getting you to the point of fatigue, you can throw those in as a way of warm-up as well. 
this one is the lower body equivalent to this exercise. <laughs> Three. with this one just because it's not multiple planes of movement so we're not going to be repeating it like the previous exercise. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, So, that concludes the basic bare bones warm up that I do. I do more rep per set of exercise, and so that almost doubles the amount of time it takes. So, you can see just that, even though it seems like a short number of exercise, you're already over 10 minutes. Uh, so, doing the full warm up, uh, you're looking at nearly 20 minutes, depending on your speed and precision, and sticking to the discipline of the set of movements and not spacing out in between and checking your phone and stuff like that. <laughs> but if you want to uh, add more exercises in there, you can. Of course, the longer your workout, the more time you want to spend warming up your body. It's not a hard and fast rule, but you can put in about a quarter of your time in the total amount of time you're working out as your warm up. If that seems like too much, do a fifth or a sixth of the amount of time you spend doing that. So for a two hour workout, you could do 20 minutes of warm up. Or if you're really working on some mobility issues, make it half an hour. It depends on. Uh, the state of your body, what you're trying to accomplish, etc. So this other exercise I'm going to show you, uh, which is necessary to have a stick. I just created this from a rake handle, cut it off either side, sanded it a bit, covered it in hockey tape, and you can use a stick like this for uh, staff training. But uh, in this case, we're going to go to either end. If you have really stiff shoulders, you're going to need a longer stick. Uh, so. So it depends on what your baseline is and what you are capable of. And these are called shoulder dislocates. You're not actually trying to dislocate your shoulder, but uh, if you were to lack the mobility, it's very easy for you to dislocate your shoulder with this type of a movement. So you're just going to bring it up and around. And then back. And that looks really easy for me because I have some shoulder mobility. So the better you get at it, you start moving the hands in. And you start to feel a bigger stretch at the sticking point. And the idea is that you go slowly and try and maintain speed and uh, relaxation through that sticking point. And for pretty much everyone, it's going to be at this point here. Because that's, you know, not, we don't really do much in our day to day life where we're bringing our shoulders and arm back in that direction. I think a good goal for anyone that wants to do this to eventually get to where your arms are at your side and you can do it all the way up and around. And in gymnastics training this is what you need to do before you start working on the rings because you can imagine there's certain movements on the hanging rings which if you get caught in it you're going to start tearing stuff in through there. I'm a little ways away from that myself but I can probably do this from here and it's even there it's very it's a bit too much so I have to extend out a bit. So it's a good stretch in that one part of the pectoral muscle and shoulder. And of course if you have a shoulder injury, work with a professional on this. And you can do like nine a day and see if you progress. If you're not progressing, do them slower so that you actually move through the stretch part a little better. Or you can just add more reps into your sets. And be careful that you're not, you know, doing it kind of like that. Because that's easy to get around the stretch point. You want to have it smooth and both hands moving at the same rate. You'll also probably feel it in your biceps. It's to stretch your biceps out if they become tight from doing too many curls without corresponding mobility work. So if you follow along with this and you've enjoyed it and or you've uh, gotten benefit from 
using these exercises or even the shoulder dislocates exercise with that stick. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I want to hear your feedback and uh, this is a great way to really have a solid workout that you can do every day in not too long of a time that uh, gives, I think, the most benefit for the time you put into it. If you spend all this time doing all these different stretches and holding these stretches, you're not getting as much of a warm-up for your joints, which I think is what's most crucial that you want to protect when you're doing sports, fighting, uh, cardio, strength training, etc. So check out the links below as well because I've got some links to my favorite uh, books by one of my favorite authors. So thanks for watching and I'll talk to you again soon. Take care and embrace life without limits.